everybody. This is Elaine, and my friend Tony is behind the camera, and this is Sissy. Everybody knows my sister here. Anyway, I today, have, well, I've had a lot of requests. Let me back up. A lot of requests to show you how I coffee stain my laced pattern paper. I kind of thought I had done a decent job at explaining it, but when you're on the camera and you just have that much space, it's hard. So that's why I've asked Tony to come and get behind the iPad and let me show you. Um, so first of all, um, I'm going to ask her to kind of scan the table a little bit here. And you can see that I have different laces, different vinyl laces. I have some placemats, I have some doilies, I have some tablecloths that have been cut up. That's what that long one is, and these over here are tablecloths. The rest of them, for the most part, are placemats. Um, I like the variety. I, I'm always on the hunt for it, too. Um, it's hard sometimes to know whether you got that pattern already or not, because you get so many. Um, the other thing that I will do, I've been asked where I find my lace. Um, everywhere. Yard sales, flea markets, brand new, Amazon or websites, whatever. Um, when I get tablecloths, I cut them up. I usually cut them up into at least a quarter of the tablecloth and then I will sell the other three pieces. I don't need a 9 by 12 or whatever tablecloth. I don't need that much lace. Um, I'm going to ask Tony to kind of look back here. This is where I keep my um, pieces of tablecloths and my placemats. I try to keep everything as flat as I can. Um, that's important to me. It if you have a wrinkle in your um, the tablecloth that you're coffee staining on, if you have a wrinkle in there, it could show in your paper. If you have a wrinkle or a bulge in your vinyl, you could have a blemish on your paper. Um, there's, I don't know, a lot to consider, but I'm going to put Sissy down here for a second. Even if you have a boo-boo, and I'm going to show you some, even if you have a boo-boo, as you can see, this did not stain correctly. Um, it's okay. It, um, you know, you can always tear it up for collage. These didn't stain well at all. It still doesn't mean that they can't be in journals. Um, I'm going to show you what I use, and that's why I kind of have a bunch of ones that did not work, because I didn't use what I normally use. Um, have a seat. Sit down. Um, first thing I use is the cheapest instant coffee I can find. I buy a big one of it, and no, I do not know how much coffee I use. I use a Chinese um, soup container. I used to boil my water. Don't do that anymore. So I add the water to whatever level, sprinkle my coffee in, and then Nick the Booksmith suggests that you add baking soda. I think it kind of helps neutralize the acid in the coffee a little bit. And again, I don't measure it. I just use what I think is right. The other thing that I do, and um, I'm going to set it right here. I use this brush. And the reason why I'm going to have to put my glasses on. Um, it is called Americana Decor. It is a two-inch flat brush. And it, the bristles on it, to me, are really smooth. They're soft. And they're even. So when I go to brush coffee on the paper, it is a nice feel. It, it covers it very well. I know they also make a four inch one and I've been considering it. I, I don't know yet. Like right now on this, these two little tables, I have 18 pieces of letter size paper. Now the paper I use, I don't know if it has to be hammer mill and I'm not endorsing them, but is premium laser print. 28 pound that's the important thing so let me say it again laser print not inkjet not copy paper i use laser print 28 pound it works the best for me i've had the best results with it um i, I can't imagine using anything else and when i have that's when i've come up with a lot of paper that's not pretty all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a reveal of all of these and I'll just chat a little bit about what I've done and let you look at them as they as I uncover them. And then I'm going to actually sit and just do like maybe one of the placemats so you can see how I do it. 
that's been the biggest request. All right, Tony, we're going to do some reveals here. Now, the thing that you see is the coffee. I did these yesterday about 1 o'clock, and it is 11 o'clock here. So the biggest thing is when you stain your paper, walk away. Let it dry. I don't stack it up. I don't do multiple layers. And as you can see, look at that print. And it's like magic. It goes to the other side. I don't know how that happens, but it's magical to me. So for the most part, when I coffee stain paper inside, it usually takes, I don't know, maybe up to eight hours to dry, depending on how warm your room is. Um, if I've done them outside before, now this is a piece of tablecloth. I've done them outside before and it's only actually taken a couple of hours. It doesn't take long at all. Um, the other thing that happens sometimes is if you keep using the same tablecloth, it will get saturated with coffee stickiness. I can't explain it. You're going to have to wash your tablecloth. Now, the tablecloth is just a plain old cheapy one, but it does have the felt lining on it. Don't know if that makes a difference. Just make sure that your tablecloth is smooth. And again, I don't know. I just, I just love the way they turn out. The other thing with me putting the baking soda in it that I've noticed is my cough, excuse me, my paper has been coming out a little bit darker um, than it normally has. So I might be adding more coffee, um, dry coffee than I normally have. Or it could be that baking soda making a difference. I'm not really sure. But Tony, come on up here. This is the stickiness of the coffee. And that's why I said it. this will, like that's really sticky right now. That will mess with you down the road if you let it build up too much. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. And if you, you know, I try to get the most out of it. If you just want to put your one piece of paper in the middle of that placemat like that, that's fine. I just try to get the most out of every piece that I can. Now this one is like the end of a tablecloth and I kept it intact. And there you go. Look at that pattern. Now you tell me that's not pretty and that that's not making pretty paper. Um, at this point, I want to show you this. I also sometimes, and, and I make a plan before I do it, like this piece right here will pretty much take up the whole table. So I will maybe do some pieces landscape, maybe a couple pieces portrait, whatever. I try to get the most under it that I can. But some pieces I keep like that. And again, remember, it's important that you keep your vinyl flat. No ripples in it. But if you don't mind ripples, then that's fine too. <clears throat> now this is just a doily. Remember, always be on the hunt. That's the only one of those I have, and isn't it nice? I just love it. I love it, love it. These are some pieces of tablecloths. Again, pretty, and again, different patterns. Sometimes the patterns, when you go to buy them, they might look a little bit the same. I'm struggling here, reaching across the table, but that's okay. Hold on. We get it. But you can hear the, hear the coffee peeling. Okay, there you go, Tony. Zoom in on that. That's a boo-boo. I must have had either a ripple in my vinyl or in my tablecloth, but that doesn't really bother me so much. You can always put a pocket over it, or that can be your side where you do a side tuck. It's not really a big deal, or I might tear that up for collage, but I will put that in my not perfect pile. <clears throat> now, I have actually sold my paper. Um, I do it for a dollar a sheet, so if there's any time you're interested, reach out to me. I don't, I don't, um, no shipping and all that, so I'd have to look all that up. So at this point now, I'm going to put on my glasses, and I'll just use this one right here. I have some paper out. We're going to sit and do two pieces. <clears throat> all right, so here's what I do. I know two pieces are going to fit under that comfortably. So I'm going to take my coffee. Now, this is the coffee I had yesterday. You also can't leave your coffee out, not refrigerated or whatever, for very long because it will get moldy. Now, I just call, just, this, I'm saying this is the back of my paper, okay? So I just make sure that the whole back is covered. It doesn't have to be pretty. 
It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be covered. Let's do the other one. Again, this is, I think this is the part that people were not understanding that, that I do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just cover it up. And sometimes I'll go back over my vinyl sides and try to get up some of that coffee because that's where it makes your tablecloth nasty. All right, so we're going to flip it over. Now, in this case, what I do is I try to get my pieces as close together and as lined up as I can for my pattern. Now, I'm going to put this vinyl piece on here. Now, when you go to do this, I'm going to ask Tony to come on in here. This has been used a bunch of times. That's why it's the color it is. But there is two sides to this, of course. This side, I don't know if you can see, and I'm going to try to wiggle it. You see the gloss on it? That is flat. This side is pretty much textured as if it really were crocheted or whatever. The flat side is what you want to put to the paper. That's what's important. So then I just kind of line it on up. Now, here, I smooth it all out. And I am on the crack of the table, so let me get off of that. Move it a little bit. All right, so everything feels smooth to me. The tablecloth and the paper and the vinyl. Now, I just take my brush and I work it into every nook and cranny. Tony, if you could come on in here and let them see. I'm working it in because now, like here you can see where I've brushed it. Here you can see where I have it. And like right there was some. So I usually kind of brush it, I guess, basically one way, trying to get it into the cracks and then I'll come back and go the other way behind it. So you do this then for all of them. Sometimes your crevices, your laces, a little bit open weave where it's easy to see. And then sometimes it's tight. It's it's harder to see trying to get into those cracks. Okay. Um, but that's it. So then I'll do these and again, walk away. I know I have seen some people put them in a tub and stack them up and everything. I like my pieces, I don't know, I guess evenly covered, if that's, uh, I, I guess that's how you'd say it. I like them where you can actually see a nice pattern over the entire piece of paper. Now, this is where some of you will become impatient. You're going to pick this up no sooner that you rub the coffee in there and you're going to say, well, that didn't make a pattern. No, right now it is one hot coffee mess up under there. There is nothing there but brown paper. All right. Somehow, as it dries, this pattern, I guess, pushes the coffee away from it or whatever, and it makes the print. But you got to let it dry. Don't think you're going to come up, oh, pick this up right now and see anything you're not. All right, so that's pretty much how I do it. You just put your coffee over the back side and then lay your paper down, or excuse me, your flip your paper, lay your vinyl down on top of it, brush the coffee into every nook and cranny, everywhere. And in my opinion, I don't know, can you have too much coffee? Don't know. I just, it'll probably take it longer to dry, but I really like to make sure it's all worked in. This is actually one of my favorite parts. It's a little therapeutic for me, maybe. I don't know. But that's it. And so now, again, depending on the temperature of the room, will be how long it takes. You can see how pretty these were. These were 18 done in no time flat. Um, if you don't want them as dark as mine, you know, let me show you here. Like this one is lighter. Just don't do as much coffee, okay? Um, so you can play with your coffee, maybe measure it out each time. I don't, I just don't. Um, but always be on the lookout for your different laces and stuff and you'll have a lot of fun and a good variety of paper. So anyway, so thank you for coming to see me. Um, remember, you can find me on Facebook. I do, I have a group, I have a page, I have my own personal one. Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Pinterest. And remember, I have that little bitty Etsy shop where 
I don't have the papers in here, but you can reach out to me there if you want to, and, and I can add some for you. Um, I have blueprints and tags and stuff in there. So I guess that's it, and I appreciate your time. You can check it out. And if you have any more questions, please let me know. I've rambled on a lot, but I wanted to get it all there and explain to you. So I appreciate you. See you going down the road. Bye.